<laughs> All right, great. Uh, well, thank you very much, Peter. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, Peter and Vanessa Velasquez for organizing this uh, seminar series and for putting together the recent uh, website, this researchcores.cuanschutz.edu. I would um, strongly encourage you to check out that website. It provides a comprehensive list of cores on campus, and I think um, really um, is a great entry place to understand how we can, we collectively as core facilities can support your research. Great. So uh, my name is Eric Clamby, and I am director of the flow cytometry shared resource of the uh, CU Cancer Center. Um, and our mission is uh, to provide access to uh, state-of-the-art and cutting-edge equipment, training and education, all to facilitate high-quality flow and mass cytometry-based research. So for those of you who use these technologies, you're, you're very familiar with them, but um, in the hopes that, that we can extend our, our, our um, user base and those who might be interested in using these technologies, I want to, I want to provide some context for what these technologies are. So at their basic level, these technologies allow identification, uh, quantification and purification of individual cells based on gene and protein expression. And I will provide much more detail on that uh, in the upcoming slides. So the first thing I'd, I really wanna emphasize is that um, uh, our facility has been around since 1988 and has serviced hundreds of researchers on the campus. Um, and we have lots of great equipment and I will go through that uh, in, short, in short order, but all that equipment wouldn't, uh, would be worthless without the amazing staff that we have uh, in the Flow Cytometry Shared Resource. Um, and so I have the privilege of working with a very talented and, and uh, excellent group of, of researchers, including Christine Childs, uh, Lester Acosta, Dimitri Baturin, and Chris Terrell. And it's really uh, their efforts um, where they're cross-trained on multiple, multiple instruments and are uh, deeply knowledgeable about these technologies that really makes, uh, that makes not only the instruments run, but affords the level of, of knowledge and training for our users to, to empower um, powerful research. Um, so together, our, our team has more than 80 years of, of expertise in flow cytometry-based research. And one of the things I'd like to point out is that we're really committed to ongoing uh, education of our staff. And so uh, we participate in yearly cytometry-based conferences to ensure that we are really up to date uh, regarding changes in the field and have our finger on the pulse of, of cytometry-based research. Okay. So let's take a step back and, and just make sure that everyone's on the same page in terms of what flow cytometry and mass cytometry uh, provide. So these technologies enable rapid quantitation of cells and their properties, collecting uh, cells at hundreds of thousands of cells uh, per second in these instruments. The, the basic uh, features required for this technology are cells um, that are in a single cell suspension, so they're dissociated, combined with various detection reagents. Um, these can be fluorescently labeled um, or isotopically labeled, depending upon the technology that you're, you're analyzing. And the core uh, reagent um, for the, this technology is the use of antibodies. That being said, there are a large number of fluorescent and isotopic probes that can also be integrated within and detected by these technologies. And so please don't think that this is just limited to antibodies. Ultimately, uh, flow cytometry is quantifying cell-associated fluorescent signal. Uh, here, for example, you have two antibodies binding to, to two distinct proteins, um, whereas mass cytometry or CYTOF um, is quantifying cell-associated isotopic um, mass, where these antibodies are labeled with distinct isotopic masses. So, that sounds pretty straightforward and, and honestly kind of blah when I describe it that way. But the real, the real power here is when you think about um, the measurements that are, that are capable using these technologies. And so, um, so if you expand the lens and think about all the different measures that have been, that are now achievable by flow and mass cytometry, uh, these include, but this is not a comprehensive list, uh, measures of cell death, cell division, changes in protein and RNA expression, the, the measurement of reporter genes, as well as uh, identification of distinct cell types. So 
why does it matter? Why, why would you care about these types of measurements? So let me, let me provide three uh, brief examples. So if you are, for example, studying cancer cells and seek to understand how uh, their response to a chemotherapy, um, by using uh, flow, flow, flow cytometry, you are able to uh, uh, analyze the behavior of individual cells within a population to determine how uniform or variable response is, right? So rather than looking at a bulk analysis where you might see induction of a protein, by looking at these individual cells within this population, you can see uh, variable response between neighboring cells and also a vari varying di uh, difference in the magnitude of this response. One of the real powers of these technologies comes when you start to analyze more than one parameter, okay? And so with flow cytometry and mass cytometry, it's um, both, it's readily uh, achievable to, with flow cytometry, you can readily acquire, you know, up to at least 20 parameters, if not, um, if not mid twenties. Um, with CYTOF or mass cytometry, you can acquire more than 35 parameters on a single cell basis. And by simultaneously measuring multiple parameters, you can really understand, uh, you can gain new insights into processes that co-occur within individual cells. So for example, um, looking at these different uh, example cells, in this cell that's undergoing cell death, there might be uh, a high amount of phosphorylation of a, of a, of a protein involved in cell death. In this cell expressing green fluorescent protein, you might have induction of, of one protein on the cell surface, whereas in, in con, um, in contrast, there's another cell uh, here, which includes phosphorylation of a distinct protein, as well as the induction of, of uh, multiple cell surface proteins, okay? And so when you're analyzing multiple parameters in this population of cells, you can reveal um, really amazing complexity uh, in terms of cellular behavior that will be masked by traditional bulk assays. Another uh, common uh, use of these methods is to quantify cell types. Uh, and uh, for example, in peripheral blood of, of individuals uh, across different disease states. And uh, why would you care to analyze that? Well, by analyzing what cell types are present in peripheral blood, for example, you can identify potentially important cell mediators in complex tissue or complex disease processes. So here, for example, there's an overabundance of neutrophils, uh, which would suggest that, that uh, those cells might be critical in in promoting pathogenesis. Okay, so what are the primary technologies that we as the flow cytometry shared resource at the CU Cancer Center offer? Okay. There are three main lines of service that we provide. First, we provide cell sorting or FACS. Okay. Uh, second, flow cytometry and third, mass cytometry or CYTOF. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the differences between these technologies. So all of these uh, technologies rely on the detection of either fluorescent or isotopic uh, cell associated signal. Um, so for cell sorting, uh, this is a technology that purifies viable cells based on, on their fluorescent profile for downstream assays. Now there are a number of downstream assays that you could use um, once you have purified cells of interest. Um, common, common things that we uh, see in the core include generation of uh, recombinant or genetically engineered cell lines, for example, if you're using CRISPR-Cas9 engineering or doing retro or lentroviral expression to overexpress it, uh, a protein, making use of uh, our cell sorting facility, you can then purify cells based on, based on a uniform expression of a reporter gene to then uh, further characterize those cells based uh, with perturbed gene expression. Another common use is the purification of cell subsets. For example, from peripheral blood, you might want to analyze T cells or B cells or neutrophils. And please note that often this cell sorting is simply the gateway to a whole uh, plethora of downstream applications. Uh, for example, often uh, users uh, will sort uh, cells in our facility and then bring them on to, for example, the genomic shared resource where they can undergo um, sequencing or you can do functional assays. We, uh, you can, uh, we can hand off samples to the animal imaging shared resource or cell technology shared, res shared resource. Um, and, and the goal here is um, by identifying a purified population, you can really uh, begin to understand that and, and tease apart um, individual cell behavior rather than the bulk cell behavior. Okay. So flow cytometry and mass cytometry. 
uh, are both terminal assays. Um, so flow cytometry quantifies cell associated fluorescence and can collect anywhere from one to 20 plus parameters per cell. Uh, these instruments collect hundreds of thousands of events per second, meaning that, uh, and this is one of the real powers of, of these technologies, you can analyze thousands to millions of events uh, and really gain an understanding of the complexity within your population of interest. Now mass cytometry or CYTOF quantifies cell associated isotopic signal and um, routinely is capable of, of characterizing at least 35 parameters per cell. This instrument collects at hundreds, hundreds of events per second. This is also a terminal assay. But what I'd like to emphasize here is that for both flow cytometry and mass cytometry, that um, these are incredibly rich data sets where you can analyze the interrelationship between different parameters, for example, in this biaxial plot, or you can use uh, dimensionality reduction and clustering algorithms to, uh, to cluster your data to really understand what cell subsets might be present within a co complex mixture. Okay, so in terms of the technologies that we offer, we have uh, in our facility, we have four cell sorters, okay? We have three staff assistants staff assisted cell sorters, meaning that you need to interface with our staff to um, achieve cell sorting. But we also have a, uh, an additional cell sorter in which trained researchers can sort their own samples and they can sort them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay? Um, this, tech, this, uh, this self sorter is uh, an, a recently added service and we're very keen on um, getting more and more users users uh, to, to do this, to really empower your research beyond kind of a, a, a typical nine to five workday. In terms of flow cytometers, we have uh, four flow cytometers. We have three conventional flow cytometers and one spectral flow cytometer. I won't go into the nuances of, of, of these different technologies, um, but I'm happy to take questions on that. All, all, of those, I, all of these cytometers are available to be operated 24 seven by trained researchers. And then finally, we have the Helios mass cytometer. Um, and in combination, in collaboration with HIMSR, um, we uh, co-operate a CYTOF antibody bank. And I'll discuss that more in a, in a minute. Okay. So this is simply a list of all of our products uh, and services. I just want to emphasize a few things here. We have uh, significant cell sorting capacity. Okay, our cell sorters, are, the four sorters are on the left-hand side here, um, but we can do up to six way sorting um, these are high high speed cell sorters, um, and we can do um, multiple multiple um, color based cell sorting. In terms of our traditional cell analyzers, we have three that can collect for anywhere from ten up to twenty six colors. Uh, for our advanced cell analyzers, the Cytec Aurora, a spectral analyzer, can collect more than twenty five colors, and the the, the Helios mass cytometer can collect. Um, at least 35 parameters, if not uh, upwards of 40. In addition, we provide uh, some, uh, we provide Luminex and cell counting services, as well as the antibody bank. And then uh, importantly, uh, a major emphasis of our efforts is on consulting and education. Uh, finally, we also provide uh, site licenses for various software. So a couple of things I really want to, you to take home here. Uh, first, these technologies can function as standalone technologies. You know, many many projects just involve flow cytometry or mass cytometry, but they can also serve as uh, as complementary technologies. For example, if you're doing single cell sequencing, um, you can uh, these technologies would be a logical counterpart of that. They can also integrate with other methods to afford increased uh, resolution. I'd also like to point out that while we are the while we are a uh, cancer center shared resource, we are open to all investigators at Anschutz. Uh, since 2017, we have supported more than 350 researchers, um, and, and uh, that's resulted in more than 125 cancer-relevant publications. And I'd say that about two-thirds of our users are cancer center members, but uh, one-third of our one, one third of our users are not cancer members. Okay. So I'd like to provide a few uh, brief examples of of studies that we've supported. Um, these are these are just going to be a very uh, quick description description of these, but um, yeah, right. So uh, in previous studies from the Thorburn uh, group, where they were investigating mechanisms of autophagy and uh, cell, cell responses to autophagy inhibition, uh, we provided multiple services, including cell sorting uh, and flow sedimentary analysis. 
where um, the Thorburn lab was analyzing multiple processes at the single cell level, and that included uh, reactive oxygen species generation, uh, the regulation of, and the regulation of autophagy at the single cell level. Um, another example of where, we, where our services have, have aided publications is the use of a series of studies uh, done in collaboration with Rafe Nemanas group uh, studying lung cancer and immune uh, determinants that influence immune, immune cell engagement. Here I'm providing an example in which uh, the Nemanas lab used a Cytoff analysis uh, to compare the cellular composition across different uh, conditions, whether a naive lung um, or a, or uh, a tumor-bearing lung either with a parental tumor or in which the tumor had been genetically modified to identify. And uh, this study um, identified uh, differences in cell, set, cell subset abundance using uh, mass cytometry or cytoff based analysis. Another example of how our, our services have aided in research on campus is um, in studies done by the by Sonic Karam's lab. Um, in which they've used flow, uh, both flow cytometry and mass cytometry in, uh, in multiple cancer models. So for example, in pancreatic cancer and head and neck cancer mouse models, uh, where they were characterizing cell subsets. And uh, in this series of studies, they were looking at the contribution of, efferin, of an efferin pathway um, in which um, by antagonizing this pathway in the, in, uh, this resulted in uh, dysregulation or perturbation in the, in the relative frequency of dis different cell subsets. And here, for example, they found that this compound uh, decreased the uh, relative frequency of regulatory T cells, an important inhibitory T cell subset. Two uh, recent examples that have come up um, basically during uh, the pandemic. Uh, one, we were, uh, we were uh, excited to be part of the Covidum project um, spearheaded by Joaquin Espinosa uh, and his group. Uh, and this was, a, this was a project that involved multiple core services, but in particular, um, we provided uh, support for their mass cytometry based analysis of PBMCs. Another interesting example that um, we've uh, been working, that we've been supporting is an ongoing study from Jim Costello's group. Uh, and this is a, a recent preprint from Jim's group in which They've actually been using mass cytometry to characterize cisplatin uptake within cancer cells, and so this is an example where you're not where they're not using an antibody-based probe, but instead a chemical probe. In this case, cisplatin, uh, and finding different experimental conditions that influence uptake or resistance to, cis, to cisplatin. Okay. So I know that those were very brief uh, snapshots of those studies. Um, but I just wanted to give you a sense of some of the breadth of, of research that we've supported. I'd also like to emphasize that we are really committed to training and, and education. So um, since 2017, we've provided over 300 uh, individual user trainings where it's one-on-one -on -one instrument training um, where, um, to, help, to enable researchers to then run their own uh, samples on our flow cytometers. We've consulted more than 800 times on different projects. Um, and, and that consultation can range all the way from the initial experimental design to uh, terminal data analysis. We've also have coordinated user group meetings, uh, including both flow and mass cytometry user groups, uh, as well as uh, arrange for seminars and invited speakers uh, to continue uh, to raise uh, education regarding cytometry based research on campus. Uh, I, will, I would also like to point out that we are uh, further committed to reproduce, to promoting rigor and reproducibility uh, through our services. And I don't need to go into depth on this, but suffice to say that our instruments undergo daily quality control. Our staff are highly knowledgeable about instrument operation and maintenance. Our instruments have service contracts to make sure that uh, the instruments are uh, not only maintained, but upgraded appropriately. We also uh, work closely with instrument manufacturers and we provide uh, researcher education. And so it's really a multi-tiered approach uh, to ensure that we robustly support you, um, the research community, to ensure uh, acquisition of high quality data. One example uh, of something that's not an instrument but complements our instrumentation is our CYTOF antibody bank that we've um, established in collaboration with the Human Immune Monitoring Shared Resource that Kim uh, will discuss shortly. 
Um, and the reason that we that this we established this resource is that the mass cytometry or CITOF technology measures uh, typically 35 to 40 parameters per experiment. And often the cost of entry into this technology is prohibitive. And so uh, this, this CITOF antibody bank that we uh, co-operate houses more than 400 uh, anti-human and anti-mouse antibodies that are that can be immediately used in CITOF-based experiments. Um, and rather than having to purchase all these antibodies, rather than one individual lab having to purchase all these antibodies, instead, um, investigators can purchase antibodies from the stock um, to uh, allow a reduced cost of entry into this, into this technology. Okay. The other thing I'd say is that, um, as I mentioned, we offer uh, software site licenses for multiple uh, programs. And we also think a lot about uh, data analysis. So one example of, of that is a paper from a few, few years back where we were comparing different CITOF algorithms. Um, and, uh, look, uh, and so in this manuscript, um, we're, and we're happy to provide data sets that from this manuscript, we really compare the performance of different CITOF-based uh, CITOF data analysis algorithms to understand the nuances and intricacies of those different algorithms and to provide um, an introduction to those technologies and data analysis uh, approaches. So um, finally, I'd like to point out that we interact with many other shared resources and cores on campus. Um, one of our, our primary collaborators is the Human Immune Monitoring Shared Resource, but we often end up handing cells, uh, sorted cells off to other facilities, whether animal imaging, functional genomics, genomics, uh, cell technologies. Uh, we also have ongoing discussions with other uh, flow cytometry uh, core facilities on campus, including the Barbara Davis Center, Clinimmune, and the Immunomicro uh, core. Right. So one thing I want to be sure I don't miss is I want to acknowledge all the people that, that make this possible. So as I mentioned, the staff are amazing. Uh, so Christine, Lester, Dimitri, and Chris. I also would like to, to acknowledge Karen Helm, who was a long-term manager of this facility and really uh, put us on an amazing uh, course. I'd like to thank all the researchers who use our services. Um, and uh, we love working with, with a wide range of investigators. So um, please um, keep contacting us. Um, we receive significant administrative support from the Cancer Center um, and financial support. Um, many of, uh, but Michaela and her team uh, provide a lot of support uh, for us and uh, and Haida and Natalie uh, provide additional oversight for our facility. We also are responsive to our internal advisory board and I thank uh, them for their efforts. And finally, uh, in terms of financial support, in terms of beyond chargebacks, we also receive cancer center support, uh, report from the cancer center support grant and the Gates Stem Cell Center. And for some of our instruments, we received support from the, the, the Strategic Infrastructure Research Committee or the CERC, um, as well as the RNA Bioscience Initiative. So finally, we'd love to talk to you about your research. You know, even if you don't do flow cytometry or mass cytometry or cell sorting, we love having those conversations. We think about this all the time and um, we would love to try to figure out how to help you uh, move your research forward. We are physically located on the fourth floor of the research uh, one South Tower. Um, our, we're, our facility is staffed from nine to five, Monday through Friday, but once you train it, and for our facility, you can access our, access our facility 24 seven. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me directly or to email uh, the core at the cc.flowcyto at ucdenver.edu. Um, and we are on iLabs. I would also like to emphasize that we are not a static facility. We are constantly evolving. Uh, we're currently in the process of uh, arranging uh, for new acquisitions. So uh, please stay tuned. Uh, there will definitely be changes coming in 2022. So, thanks so much for your attention. Really appreciate it. And I'd be happy to take questions now, or if there are no questions, then I'd be happy to hand it off to Kim. Well, Based on, on the, the quiet there, uh, yes, please feel free to reach out to me um, or, or the core. Um, and Kim, maybe uh, uh, we'll pass it on to you.